companies take advantage of the government by charging extraordinary prices for insignificant things? Well, that's the subject of today's Idea of the Day. I remember in 1980, when Ronald Reagan first ran for president, one of the key points in his platform was trying to cut down on wasteful spending. And he pointed his finger at the manufacturers of companies saying they were taking advantage of the government by charging extraordinary prices for simple things like several hundred dollars for a pair of pliers or a special screw or for a toilet seat or some other uh, thing like that. And in defense of these defense contractors, some of that blame, in fact, most of that blame is not with those contractors. It's with the government itself, unfortunately. The fact is, although there's definitely a lot of room for companies to take advantage of the government um, whenever they get a, def a contract or especially a defense contract, the reality of it is it's not entirely their fault. Case in point, let's say I were to go to uh, Home Depot and buy a pair of pliers. I certainly could buy a pretty decent pair of pliers for 10 bucks, maybe even find them in a dollar store, but a good pair of pliers maybe I might spend $20 for a good pair of pliers. So why would the contractors charge an extraordinary amount of money for a pair of pliers to the government? And the truth of the matter is that's not because they're just simply marking up the price of a product. When the government puts out a, uh, um, a bid, there's an awful lot of planning that goes into every single facet of it. And more often than not, these are very specific things that essentially become the equivalent of a one-off, meaning they only need a handful of this particular product. And anyone who's familiar with manufacturing knows that if you're going to manufacture something, you spend an awful lot of time planning, discussing, orchestrating, architecting, designing, and then figuring out the logistics of how to build the product that you're going to build. And then you make it back, or your R&D, your, your setup costs, by actually manufacturing them in, in, in quantities. Now, if you needed to make a pair of pliers to a very specific set of requirements, like it has to fit inside of the cockpit of an F-15, it needs to be in a space no more than a certain number of inches, it has to be no heavier than a certain number of ounces, it needs to be made of certain alloys that aren't necessarily, uh, that, that won't cause a spark, it may be, needs to be made out of whatever it may be, and it may even be made out of something that's common, but the point is that these are very specific specifications. So now you have to tool some equipment to make this widget, pliers, bolt, toilet seat, whatever it may be. So when you have to do that, I mean, if I were to ask a, uh, if I were to ask you, for example, to manufacture for me a pair of pliers, what would you charge for it? Well, I mean, granted, you might be in the pliers business, but you, you're now going to make a pair of pliers just for one person and just a small number of them. Well, you can't sell a million of them. So in defense of defense spending, uh, i just think that a part of the problem is that the specifications for a lot of these things are sometimes a little too obscure. Uh, well, you know, when you manufacture something, uh, it, it would be sometimes easier to just simply find a way of doing the reverse. Meaning, uh, instead of saying, well, this is my set of specifications, you go out and you find some things that maybe already are in the marketplace. So now you have the benefit of scale. But in reality, again, if, if something isn't something that's common, you can definitely understand why it's so expensive to do that. Um, because it's not your thing. You're, you're designing F-15s or whatever it may be, and someone says you've got to have this certain type of thing inside of it. You, look, you got to make three of them, you know? So yeah, you're going to charge $100 or $200 for a bolt, but it's, it's got a certain type of threading and a certain type of way. You can't just go to Home Depot and buy one. And that's kind of the way it works, unfortunately. So that's today's Idea of the Day. All right, there it is. That's today's Idea of the Day. Some of them are pretty good, right? And some of them suck, I admit. First to admit, some of my ideas suck. But if you visit Idea of the Day every day and you subscribe to my channel by looking at the subscribe link in the corner, 
you'll see a brand new idea every single day. And I promise you, some of them don't suck.